Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the beautiful, beautiful content. Uh, so here we are. We're going to be working on some more gameplay related stuff. And in the last video we implemented the camera and all that stuff. I just want to show you what we're going to do today. So I have a few fixes and then I'm not really sure what we're going to do. But I, I thought out some stuff. So we'll just pick something. Um, but I just want to see if this works. And we actually implemented the texture, um, the render texture in the last video, and it kind of it kind of works, and it removes some problems. But there's still some tearing here. You see that, right? Now to remove that, the problem is whenever you're working with SFML or any other type of thing uh, where you use floats to move around, you're gonna have this problem. And you're going to always be stuck on this where you're moving the view. Because remember, when you're moving a view, it's basically moving the whole world for you, okay? And when you're moving it with a float value with a lot of decimals, uh, sometimes it's not pixel perfect. It's not good for the, the pixel positioning. And the whole world moves in a way where there's no real pixel there and it's kind of buggy and shit. And then you see this line tearing, right? And that's why it happens to the left, to the right, because it's usually... Um, well, no, I don't know where I'm trying to go with that, but usually it happens to the left or right. I don't, I'm not 100% sure why, but it does. If you move a lot up and down, probably you'll see the same thing in the horizontal direction. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you see it and it's really annoying and it can ruin your whole motivation to even work on a game. Now, to w the way to fix that, so we're going to start off by fixing it in the game state, uh, right here where we move the camera for the player. Now the problem is the float has so many decimals that sometimes it's not really perfect, right? So the way we fix it is we actually round down the float value to a decimal so it's more precise, so it's more pixel perfect, right? So it doesn't really mess up the pixel. So what you're going to do is you're going to actually divide this up into X and Y, and we're going to floor both of these values. So you're going to just use STD floor, all right? Just STD floor. It's not that expensive of an operation. You just do this, and it's going to floor that value down for you. Now, it's you know it's annoying to have to use a function like this, uh, but it's probably a very simple mathematical thing, so it doesn't really matter that much. But this floors it down to maybe, it, it does to one decimal, I think, one decimal point. So it's, it's a lot nicer. Uh, so we're just going to use that. And we're going to do the same thing for camera speed. So STD floor and this is in the editor state okay so what you want to do is you want to grab the whole calculation the multiplication and put that within the floor but you want to leave out the minus that should be on the outside because floor basically uh, removes any negatives like that right so even if you have negative you floor it, it's going to be positive so you want to make sure you you remember that when you're working with floor and roof or whatever it's called ceiling I think it's called not roof <laughs> Uh, so there you go. So you just want to make sure you work with that. And remember, there you go. Minus on the outside. No problems. Um, and you should be good to go. Uh, whoops. What did I just do? Did I mess it up? Yeah, I messed it up. Okay, there you go. Mm, that should that should do it. That should do it. Now, if we run this again for the player, hopefully you'll see. I'm just going to see if my voice is okay. I'm not cracking up too much. There you go. Okay, let's go in a new game, and let's run around a little bit. Uh, I don't see any more tearing. You see? I don't see any more tearing the vertical or the horizontal. So that problem is gone. All right? Um, and it might make your camera a little more jittery because it's not working with all those small float values. You could use more decimals, I think, um, because there's a point where it messes up. So we could use more decimals if it's too jittery for you. Uh, and that could help. Now, if we work in the editor, the same thing here. Uh, oh, wait. Why is this not moving? Wait, I must have messed it up. Uh, STD floor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, this should work. I'm not 100% sure why this isn't working. Um... It should work. It's very strange. Is that what I did? Was that right? Editor. Oh, it was kind of working. 
It's very strange. Uh, I think it's flooring it to zero. That's the problem. It's, it's becoming zero. So you might want to leave out the DT, but you can't really do that either because those the such small the small values. You know what? We don't need this in the editor. It might work if you have larger delta time values, I think. But, you know, we're just going to leave it out for now. I'm pretty, pretty sure it doesn't really matter in the editor anyway. Um, so there we go. We'll just do that. doesn't matter. Anyway, there you go. So we fixed that little problem that we were having, right? And what we're going to do is we're basically going to just... We set up the collision in the previous video, right? And the way we did it is we did it in the tile map, CPP and tile map here, I think. So I'm just going to close editor state because we have some colliders. Um, there you go. There you go. Tile map, check, load from file, update collision. So here we go. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to do some basic collision checking for the window edges or not the board window edges, but the world edges, right? Because we do have a maximum size of the world. Um, max size X, max size Y, right? And those are unsigned ints and they're basically grid how many grids there are, right? And we have the grid size. So we have basically the maximum size of the world available to us. We could save that as a float because we're probably going to have to use it. Um, that's max size. Uh, da, 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 da. We could. Or for now, we could just... Just go with it. We don't have to do anything special. But anyway, let's just check out the uh, the top and the left of the world. So if entity dot get get position dot x is less than zero point f, all right. Uh, entity set position zero point f and then entity get position y. So we're basically just going to snap the entity, whatever entity it is, we're going to snap it back to zero. So we're not going to let it go past into the minus, into the negatives, right? And then we're going to do else if the entity's position is larger than, this is where we're going to have to check for uh, the, the size of the map. So I'm just going to do this, max size.x multiplied by... Uh, static cast float. All right, I'm just gonna do that. Max size grid size f. All right, there you go. So that's gonna give us the maximum pixel size of the of the world, right? So if it's larger than that, uh, we're gonna set it to that value. So I'm just going to do that. And it sucks that I'm going to have to do this twice. That's why I actually want to save it as a vector 2f here that we can reuse because we're probably going to have to reuse that quite a lot. SF vector 2f max size world. I'll just call it max size world. All right. This is max size grid. That's what I want to call it actually. Uh, world f grid world grid so it's a large 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 name here it's not the best um but world grid all right i'm just gonna change this quickly all right i'm sorry but this is this is important just so you you kind of all you have to do is kind of copy paste it everywhere you don't have to worry it's not too big of a deal uh, just put it in wherever you see it fit. Max size, max size. All right. So it tells you what it is. You know, it's basically it's very important to do. I'm just dumb. I didn't do it from the start. I didn't really think we needed a permanent kind of a world float value, but we do. So you go once you do that. Go ahead in here and say this. Max size world f dot x equals 
this no width multiplied by grid size if right now grid size because that's float and that's an unsigned so static cast float width and grid size and do the same thing for y but we're going to use height um, and then we'll have that saved so width height come on man height okay there you go boom so now we got that saved as a float now we can use that constantly without having to static cast that sorry about this guys i'm just dumb always do stuff slowly um but this is the this is the process of programming you know that's how it is man you do something and then you realize it's dumb and you do something better and that's the way it goes that's the what that's what i'm teaching you all right so there you go all right here we go and this should be why don't forget that very important otherwise you'll get a bunch of weird errors uh that's very weird why i had that uh there you go all right just make sure that's correct some of you probably saw that you're like ha lol what is he doing okay now we got to do it the other way around so if it's less than zero uh we'll keep it now change it back to x and then 0 0.f all right in the y and then we're gonna check if it's larger right if the y position here is larger than the world size y right up and down then we're going to set it uh, to whatever the entity's position is here to this max size world f dot y so that's the way that's going to work and this is going to keep updating all the time and it's always going to look for um world bounds all right and this is going to check for tiles so at least the world bounds should be cool now we're going to go into game state and we're going to go into update uh, and we're going to see what is what so update view update player input a player update then we're going to do a update here we're going to make a new update function player update uh, update player input update input void come on man void update tile map all right usually you want const float dt in here as well pretty sure it's going to be required let's define that and then we we'll go in here and let's work with this so here you go now this tile map uh, update all right we might just we might as well just update that and then we will update the collision with um, the player so this player all right so we're just going to go ahead and do that and then we're going to call it we're going to update the player and then we're going to do this no this update tile map and send in dt so hopefully that's cool now i don't always like something else manipulating uh, another object within itself you know it's, it kind of makes it unclear sometimes but for this case uh, also what you could do is you could just have this line right below the player update and that could help so you could do that if you wanted to but i, I like doing it like this i guess i guess it works so let's just try to run this let's see if this works in any way shape or form seems to be fine once you hit that generating code usually it's fine um so new game all right cool it's not letting me go to the le left or top all right it's not letting me get out of the world here that's the world edge so is that and it's not working with the hitbox really it's checking um it's checking for my the position itself so entity get position uh, and we're setting the position to whatever position it was uh, get okay so get position that's fine uh, all right so we're gonna probably have to look into that how that works i don't really remember hitbox component 
hitbox component. What do you do when you do get position here? Set position, you set the sprites position. All right, all right, all right, all right. That's cool, that's cool. Did we did we ever work with hitbox component that much? Player. Uh, all right, I guess the player's functions are a little different. Uh, player.h, what do we have? Update and blah, blah, blah. Create animation. Well, did we ever create the hitbox component? I don't, I don't, what? Oh shit, what? What's going on? What the hell's going on? Okay, so, oh, here we go. Okay, that's the hitbox component. All right, I don't remember how that works, to be honest with you guys. It was it was a while back. So, update, render, check intersect. All right, so we got to do the, we got to do stuff from here. We're going to have to do stuff from here, basically. Um... Yeah, you know what? We'll figure it out in the coming videos because we're going to have to. So probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a check for that in entity in the get position. If there is a hitbox component, I'll get the position from the hitbox component and then I'll set the positions with the offsets and all that shit later. Uh, we'll figure that out. It'll be it'll be fine. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we saved the offsets. Shouldn't be any problems. Uh, but there you go, guys and girls. For now, I think that should be fine, right? Yeah, that's a pretty long video right there. Uh, but thank you so much for sticking with me. Sorry for all the problems we're having. But we'll probably work with this hitbox component and shit in the next video. At least it worked with the sprite itself. So that's cool. Uh, but yeah, thank you again. Take care. Check out the description box, all that stuff. And keep working hard, alright? I'll see you guys and girls in the next one, alright? Bye-bye.